The homologous series of aldehydes starts with the simplest aldehyde, which is a single carbon atom that has a double bonded O and hydrogen on either side. This is a one carbon chain, so it's meth. There's all single bonds between the carbons. Well, actually, there's no other carbons, so it's an, and it's an aldehyde, so it's meth and al. Some people call this formaldehyde, but this is the official name for it. What makes the next member of the homologous series is to have a two carbon chain. To make it an aldehyde, we still need a double bonded O at the end of the molecule. Don't forget to write in all the extra hydrogens you're gonna need. This is a two carbon chain, F, single bonded together here, and aldehyde, Al, next member. Three carbon chain with a double bonded O at the end. Don't forget your hydrogens. Three carbon chain, prop, all single bonded together as an aldehyde. Bang, prop and al. And this continues. A four carbon chain is but. So the next member is butanal. And if you wanted to draw it, four carbons in a row, double bonded O, a bunch of hydrogens to give each carbon four bonds. And this continues onward for pentanal, hexanal, heptanal, octanal, nonanal, decanal into infinity. Now, what makes the homologous series special is that these all have similar reactivities or properties. The hydrogen attached to the double bonded O here has the same propensity to react no matter what the rest of the chain is here. These all react like aldehydes do. They can be, I don't know, oxidized into carboxylic acids as an example. The only thing that really differs from one member to the next is that the molecules are getting larger. So that means, well, two things, stronger van der Waal forces between the molecules. So this may be a gas at room temperature. I don't know, maybe it's a liquid. And the, the larger you get, the more likely you are to be solid or have a high melting and boiling point. And, uh, that pretty much does it for what I wanted to say. Oh, I wanted to talk about polarity. This is a very polar molecule because you have a single carbon double bonded to an oxygen. But the longer the carbon chain here, the more nonpolar the molecule will be as a whole because you've got this huge chain of nonpolar carbon-carbon and carbon-hydrogen bonds. This tiny little amount of polarity or this one polar bond can't make the whole molecule superpolar. So overall, the polarity of the molecule will decrease as this carbon chain gets longer. Anyways, thanks for sticking with me there, and best of luck.